you want to have that feeling of total freedom. When you're in the air, it feels like time slows. You can express yourself in a way that you can't do when you're grounded. I was going to go to this event. When I woke up that morning, I didn't know that everything would change. Emma Dahlstrom is on course to take it all. A flawless triple cork. Emma into a switch five. Awesome. The strongest and most technical run we've seen so far. X Games gold medalist, Emma Dahlstrom. When I grew up, I was crazy about sports. When I was 12, Hofjellet had a park, and we were so excited to go up there. It was like super small jumps and small rails, but for us, it was so new. I remember when I cleared the first box for the first time, like, yes! <laughs> so slopestyle is a course of different obstacles. Normally, it's two to four rails. And then there's normally between two and four jumps. When I stand at that start gate, everything gets silent. Our sport is kind of like painting. It's an empty canvas. You have to figure out, what can I do on this course? What do I want to show the world? And then you just start painting. You don't have to do the same thing over and over again. It's all about doing creative things and doing different things on all the features. It's such a nice feeling when you finally are able to do a thing that you have been dreaming about. You just get such a rush inside your body. I could ski all day and then I got back home and I could ski yeah. all night here. Be coming from the slope and they were so tired, You're sitting in the sofa, and you were just so most much energy. What did you feed out. me? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it was my dad who taught me to ski. My dad was the ski coach of the local ski association here in Torsby. I think this was your first own skis. So two years, seven months, something like that. Yeah. Everybody noticed that she was uh, have no worry about slopes. She was a tough girl early. And there she was on my back. Oh. Yes. Whenever my dad stopped, I was like, <laughs> keep on going. <laughs> I have to ski more and more and more. OK, yes. you could never stand still. No, smash my head. <laughs> <laughs> so I started with alpine racing. I didn't really like it. It's like so strict. I just wanted to have fun on my skis. During my dad's training sessions, I went to the side of the slope and built jumps instead with my friends. And maybe my dad wasn't super happy about that. That was the reason we, we do this for our children, because we want them to have fun and ski a lot. Emma told us she wants to go to Malung. It's so funny looking back at these pictures. I look so young there. <laughs> Malung, the free ride high school, it was kind of scary and real exciting at the same time. When I started in Malung, my progression went so fast. I was watching all these mainly guys, 13 boys and three girls. They were all doing these crazy tricks. I wanted to do the same thing. I was so inspired. Emma was kind of always been tagging along with the boys and trying to like learn everything. Always been like a hard worker, so always been putting a lot of time into her like skiing and training. 2010, I went down to Lax. I was 17 at that time. I won the qualification and came fifth, and that was kind of my kickoff on my international comp scene. I did my first U tour. I went back to European Free Ski Open the year after, and I managed to win it. Then Olympics in Sochi, I got fifth. Oh, well, Emma won X Games, which is a big deal. It is the one event I've been watching growing up. To be able to walk away with a gold was, it was very special. I uh, 
ski most days out of a year and for me it's become more and more important to take a step back from skiing and refuel that energy again so I actually feel that crave to go back to the slopes. So during summer maybe grab the guitar and play some and hang out with friends and also use that time to build my strength back up. So to be able to be on your top of your game in slow, you have to have variety. Because in a course where it's four jumps, you can spin four different directions. You also have to put your own style on it. So the judges see that you stand out. You express yourself in your own way. When you go that fast and you enter the takeoff, it really goes silent when you're in the air. And that's such a lovely moment. You have to be strong everywhere in your whole body. To maintain that strength and that flexibility is for me a way to try and stay injury free. Twenty seventeen was a really good year for me. I was really stoked because we had the Olympic qualification. So I already knew that I had a really good position. Then in late March, I was going to go to this event and I didn't know that when I woke up that morning, that's the day when uh, everything changed. So I was in Italy. We warmed up a little bit. But then I was going to do a switch five. I turned to switch and I came in backwards. In the bottom before the jump, it all of a sudden turned to slush. And that made me slow down so much that made me land on the knuckle. I felt that something was wrong. So I went and checked it when I got back home and the doctor said, your ACL is gone. Okay, that's at least six to 12 months out. It would take at least eight months until I was back at any kind of level. So that means I have to come back and be able to qualify those two months before Olympics. When she first injured her knee, it was hard sometimes to see her uh, struggle and not being able to do so much for her, more than cook her a meal, uh, tell her to go to bed early or something. I couldn't do as much. It was hard to be on the bench next to her and watching her for those 10 months. So I remember when I hit that three months post-surgery mark, my physio finally told me that I could go running. It was so nice. Back home, where I'm from, to my roots, it's uh, easy for me to fill up with energy here, to build myself back up, to go out running and, and feel free again. It's a good uh, change. It's just you and the nature, and I love that feeling. So two months before the Olympics, I had three chances to qualify. I failed the first one, I failed the second one, and then it was only two weeks to the games, and I had one last chance. Actually, I kind of gave up a little bit. It felt like, okay, maybe I'm not gonna make it. So I went out there, I still did my best. I needed to release that pressure. And finally I could do a run that I was really happy with. And I ended up fourth, which gave me that Olympic spa. When we look at the pictures from the competition, we looked at her smile. <laughs> we see that she's back. We were very proud. It was just a big victory for me to be there, but I managed to qualify first and grab the highest score I've ever had in my entire career. It's quite hard to believe that I actually made this journey looking back at it. 
you come back stronger. And I feel stronger than I've ever been before. And in that sense, I guess I can thank this injury that it actually happened. Because I am a different person on the other side. It makes me hungry. Even though I did all right at the Olympics, I want to come back and take those top spots again. I think I fell in love with this sport because everyone's happy when they do it. And that's what I like with people that ski with a smile, that they show that they love it. It's just a good atmosphere out there in the park, surrounded by mountains. It's easy to fall in love with. It's the best.